throttle body temperature before driving is looks like about 44 degrees before we started we saw the throttle body after the car had been sitting overnight was around 40 or so degrees um, this after about um, 30 miles of driving as you can see the throttle body is about 63 degrees now the hose I used to bypass the uh, throttle body ports there is around 160 170 degrees now that's going to seriously or as you can see it seriously reduced the temperature of the throttle body um, so you don't have the air passing through that hot throttle body anymore heating it up I made a video a couple years ago about a throttle body cooling bypass and I'll put that at the end of this video after my little spiel but after seeing the results of the bypass it's one of those things I regret not doing sooner now as we saw yesterday the throttle body was still about 60 degrees after about 30 mile drive and the line that would normally feed the throttle body was about 170 degrees now that's a hundred degree difference it's a huge difference I hesitated for a while about doing it and I'd read quite a bit and with people saying the throttle body was going to freeze up during the winter um, or the car was going to idle weird um, or you know people just talking crap saying it's pointless to chase that little bit of power well you know I've been running the bypass for about two years haven't had a single issue I do live in North Carolina so winters are kind of mild now this car and the Forte community runs one of the fastest if not the fastest naturally aspirated quarter mile there are a few guys running turbos or you run a nitrous that run a little quicker but they're still in the 14 second range like I am and you know 14 seconds isn't fast but it is what it is and I think it's little things like this throttle body cooling bypass you know I've ported the factory header I've ground down all the transitions in the exhaust so small things like that that allow me in a naturally aspirated car running essentially just a header back exhaust and intake and a canned ECU tune to run with those nitrous and turbo cars and you know I realized that those people talking crap haven't actually tried this themselves or tried any of the stuff they talk crap about themselves or they're just repeating what they've heard from their buddy down the road or they're too scared to think outside the box or things for themselves so in my opinion there really are no cons to the throttle body cooling bypass and one added advantage is it's much easier to take the throttle body off you don't have to worry about taking coolant lines off losing coolant and all that and I've had the throttle body off quite a few times porting in and stuff and it's made it so much easier and if you really think about it, it's one of those things when you know people talk about free power. It could be considered free power. So that's essentially the end of my little spiel. You know, don't always listen to everything you hear on the internet. Uh, you know, try it out for yourself sometimes, see how it works. I'm very pleased with the results of this bypass, and you know, it's an, it's a no-brainer. So here's the how-to video. It is kind of spliced together because I did edit out some of the stuff I had said back then when I didn't really know um, what was going to happen, but here you go. This is how to do a uh, throttle body coolant bypass on a 2010 Kia Forte. I've already detached the intake uh, just to give me a little more room. There's one hose here and one hose below it that are going to the throttle body. Um, they attach farther back down in here and what we're going to do is we're going to take both of those off and we're going to make just a bypass coming from the top hose here and we're just going to loop it back around to the bottom hose um, I already tried using one of these existing hoses to do it but they just won't work they kink so I've got another hose already ready with the clamps on it and I've already undone the clamps for all the hoses are already connected, so all we gotta do is pull them off. Um, make sure the car is cold. So we're gonna try to do this as quickly as possible so we don't lose too much coolant. 
Um, but we'll just see how it goes. Okay, so there's the top hose. I'm going to go ahead and put my new hose back on that nipple there. Okay, I think that's on there good enough. And now we'll detach the bottom hose. And try to get this one, the new hose, back on there before we lose too much coolant. Okay. Okay. So, I'm going to have to get that on there a little snugger once I have two hands. But, um, essentially what I'm going to do is just get on there snug, put the clamps back on, make sure there's no kink like it is right now. We'll take some brake parts cleaner and we'll clean out the coolant inlets. Let it air dry and I got some nipples I'm going to put on it.